at Sebring, and we wanted to come by because we noticed a kind of a different prop on one of these lovely Revo trikes that we've done a lot of work on. Uh, people got to know by now that I like this trike a lot, but I usually see a much wider prop on it, and it doesn't say this on it. So I'm Dan Johnson talking with Larry Mednick, who's going to demystify this a little bit. What are we looking at here, Larry? Well, this is a new option. We certainly haven't gotten rid of our uh, Sensnik propeller, which is a big, beefy, uh, robust uh, two-blade prop. Uh, awesome thrust, incredible sound. But we had a little bit of a need for some of the uh, videographers out there that were looking for smoothness. So ah, okay. I kind of went on a little bit of a quest. We ordered quite a few props from quite a few manufacturers and uh, tested them all. And uh, this particular prop was not just a little bit different, it was entirely different as, in terms of uh, uh, the smoothness. Is that right? Yes. That's, that's significant though, huh? Now, the ones that you were talking about, as I described, they're, you know, I'm not even sure I get my hands around them. They're a wide prop, just two blades, of course, but so is it more blades or is it the shape of the blade or is it both that contributes there's, to this lower There's a nose? lot of things happening here. I guess probably the number one thing is it's a super low inertia propeller. This prop with all four blades, even their six bladed propeller weighs about half as much as our two bladed is that right? propeller. Wow. Yeah, so it's a huge difference in weight. And one of the things before you even start flying it or taxiing around is when you start it up, the gearboxes that we have on the 912 series motors, it's a significant difference when you start the engine and shut the engine down with a super lightweight prop. So if you want to make so, your, describe the difference for us, Larry. Uh, there's a certain clunkiness as you turn off a prop that wants to spin and things are shutting down and there's some backlash that happens in the gears. Kind of a little jerky. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And it's entirely gone with this propeller. Now, this is not clutched, though. This is just the prop that's causing that, correct? Yes, just okay. the, the weight of the propeller seems to be the difference right there. So we feel like the gearboxes are going to just take a lot less wear and tear. Uh, not that the gearboxes aren't necessarily holding up, but again, you can hear the, the, uh, the ease of start and shutdown with the lighter weight propeller. Huh, okay, so what we're seeing on here is a four blade prop, still with the Rotax engine. Mm -hmm. uh, are you noticing any performance difference? Yeah, so in cruise, we actually dropped at 80 miles per hour, we dropped one gallon per hour on the 912 really? IS. That's yes. pretty significant. Yeah, we flew it all the way to Oshkosh, was its first big uh, cross country out of the uh, small circuit during testing. And uh, it was real easy to tell that we have a huge efficiency gain uh, with this particular propeller. Uh, the thing that's really unique about this prop, and this is the four blade that's designed for the 100 horse, so it works on the UL and the IS, uh, the ULS, excuse me, and the IS. Um, that's the 100 horse carbureted and the fuel, fuel injected injection. 100 horse yep. 912 from Rotex. Is that the blades are not 90 degrees to one another. I noticed that. It looks like you need to do a little adjustment because these are out of whack, but that's deliberate. Yeah, you've got a great big angle here. Um, I forget exactly the degree, and then you have a very tight angle here. Yeah, maybe maybe a hundred or more degrees, and obviously that much less on this side. Yeah, and yep. uh, so one of the things you get with a two-bladed propeller by design with a there pusher. Those are, that's about level now by my eyeball, and you can see that's not so. Correct. Or not straight up and down. So one of the things that we definitely know that you get with a two-bladed prop that's a pusher configuration is the prop goes into a wind shadow and then comes out of a wind shadow. Into the wind shadow, out of the wind shadow. So you get this pulsation, and it's not really annoying or anything like that, but it is a pulsation. The more it's blades, got to affect efficiency somewhat, possibly. just that it's doing that. And so as you add more blades, the pulsation gets finer and finer as opposed to a coarse pulsation. And then the fact that they're not coming out at the same time, now you actually have the effect ah, of more. that's the point of this then, is to... I believe that's one of the benefits. If there's more, it could be, because the efficiency is really, really high. But the smoothness in flight, I mean, there is just no vibration. Uh, we normally dynamically balance all of our propellers, because we can always get our propellers smoother than they come from the factory. We cannot improve upon these. These is are right? they're dynamically balanced at the factory. Each blade is color coded, and so there's a spot in the hub because the hub is part of that dynamic balance. Ah. So they want you putting the blue blade in the blue slot. And even you notice right here, they've color coded how you put the right on top here. There's some color coded yeah, dots. Yeah, the hub yeah. only goes like together. Like this one only on top. And the plate. So they they've gone as far as they don't want this plate out of phase because it's been balanced that well at okay. the factory. And that just saves us a whole lot of time on our end 
of hooking up the machine and then trying to add weights uh, to the propeller to get it dynamically balanced. It's all done at the factory. Now, uh, so a lot of great things to say about it. Is there a, a cost penalty for that? And we don't need exact numbers, but compare it to the Sensenic uh, two blade. Yeah, so it's a little bit more expensive. One of the other big differences that you probably noticed is this is a carbon fiber hub versus a yeah. CNC aluminum hub on the uh, Sensenic. And uh, is it displaced aft a little more too, or is that? So uh, bring the deceived? camera on the side here. You got to take a look at this. This is really interesting. And EPROPS refers to this simply as dihedral. And so the displacement in the hub brings the oh, root yeah, sure of the enough. blades further aft. But if you look at where the tips of the blades are, mm -hmm. they're actually closer to if the blades were coming out here. Yeah, it looks like right dihedral. about here to me or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the effects that you get from this is that as the thrust tries to bend the blades forward, as happens on pretty much all props, the centrifugal force now pulls the blade back and so if you watch a lot of soft propellers as you add throttle they're going to move forward as you add throttle. Uh-huh, sure, makes sense. This blade stays in one spot. There's no movement whatsoever. Because they've kind of preloaded it a little bit if you will. Exactly. Now the Sensenic, which is really really robustly built, it doesn't move either but again it's a real heavy construction and the penalty there is it's not a low inertia propeller. Not a problem, but again, if you're doing the videography and you want to watch it on a 70-inch screen like uh, Henry Trike Life does in these epic movies, <laughs> this propeller has changed the way his movies have come out, and people are starting to ask if he's using gyro-stabilized mounts. Ah, is that and right? They're simply so people GoPros. can notice it that readily too then. If you watch it on a big screen, there's no question what this propeller is doing in terms of uh, smoothness. Okay, Larry, I want to ask you a little bit about the construction. You said it's carbon fiber, but there's, uh, and, I, and I can certainly see that's the exterior of it here, but do you give me a little more detail about how it's built that you know? Yeah, it's pretty interesting because the entire front uh, of the blade. The, the leading edge you're talking about. The leading right edge, okay. right. These are solid. But then as you go into the trailing edge section, they're hollow. Uh -huh. So you have... Part of uh, how they get the weight down then. Yeah, they're, you know, usually you have either hollow blades or you have solid blades. This is kind of a hybrid in a way. And uh, they don't use any leading edge protection whatsoever. I noticed that, yeah. There's no so we were really interested uh, to see how they'd take a prop strike. Luckily, I left a uh, little uh, fastener, which is a quarter inch bolt loose, and I had one go right through the prop blade. And it was, uh, it, it, it took a ding, and it was very easy to repair, and it, uh, if it could take that, I, I'd say this propeller can actually definitely take a hit. And a lot of people look at it and say, wow, that, that propeller looks so uh, delicate. And, well, uh, it is. It's kind of a thin and lean and doesn't maybe look, I agree, it doesn't look like it could take a beating. It, uh, it, yeah, so that was the thing that really surprised us. And if you look on the ePROPS e uh, website, they have some uh, impact tests showing just how durable the blades actually are. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about adjustability. Is there anything you can do to it? You said they're very careful about how you assemble this yep. so that you maintain their dynamic balance, but Correct. you still need some adjustment capability. Yeah, absolutely. So this is fully ground adjustable. Okay. And uh, one of the things that's really nice about EPROPS is they do uh, with every propeller, even the little ones for the Polini, or if you go with their six-bladed propeller for the 914, but whatever model you buy, they come with a digital protractor and uh, one of the things they've added to the equation is a little hook that it actually hooks onto the blade as opposed to you trying to hold it up in place. And what that does is it gets it straight, but on top of the protractor, there's a bubble. And what the bubble does is it helps you get the blade right back into the same position as you measure it. And uh, it's amazing that how... That makes for quite a precise adjustment. Correct. Then, huh? okay. And the one thing I have found is the uh, propeller does like to be very, very close. If, if the blades are out more than 0.3 degrees, the smoothness is gone. Is and, that right? Okay. Yeah. So, so it's very important you get it right. And with their protractor system, uh, I am to the point now where I can usually get them within 0.1 on the first try. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. So it's a nice system for being able to... Uh, to, to adjust yeah, the Yeah, things happen over the course of time. It's nice to know you can adjust them that readily then. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, finish off here and then we'll get a web address for you about how to find out even more stuff. But 
are you going to represent this or are you just using it? No, I was uh, so sold on the product and especially a friend of mine that flies uh, one of the uh, Silverlight uh, gyrocopters with a 914 decided he wanted to try one. So I contacted uh, E-Props and asked them and they said, oh, without a doubt, you need to put our six bladed propeller on that 914 gyrocopter. And uh, he was getting previously 1,100 a minute, went to 1,400 a wow, minute, and picked right? up 15 knots in cruise. Is that right? Those are both pretty fantastic numbers. Yeah, very impressed with that. And uh, so I've got a six-blade prop going around. Uh, I think uh, Galen uh, has one now over at Soaring Concepts trying on his uh, auto gyro. And um, just, you know, hearing really good things back. And uh, But anyway, getting to your question. Yes, we're the U.S. Uh, representatives for eProps, okay. and uh, if anybody would like to order one for their application, it comes with a uh, money-back guarantee if you're not entirely thrilled Is with it. Is that right? Absolutely. That's quite something. You don't often hear that in our business. Yep. And, okay, so I needed a web address. Uh, that's how they can find out this. Uh, that's just correct. through Evolution Trikes, then? Yeah, evolutiontrikes.com. Okay, so there's the web address. You can find out, obviously, about the Revo, the Rev, and, man, maybe some new things to come. And... Uh, also, lots about eProps, and you can find more about these aircraft and many other aircraft in the range of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Larry Mednick and myself here at Sebring.